fill us with your Holy Spirit as we feel the breeze. We just pray that your spirit will come and rest upon this church. Encourage us, inspire us, challenge us. And we just thank you, God, for this gathering. You tell us not to forsake the gathering of believers. And I thank you for Bo, for Skyla. And you spoke to them about having an outdoor church service. And then you spoke to our, our superintendent about having an outdoor service. So we obeyed your voice. You speak through people. And so we just thank you, God, for this outdoor service. We just pray your name will be glorified. And all God's people say, Amen. 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 Hi, church. It's Hi. just um there's a part in the book that's that says kid you'll move mountains and i oh i would like get emotional like oh, you're gonna move mountains you guys you understand like just like to the kids you know and um but i think what i wish that i would have said is kid your god is gonna move mountains you know and he that's what we have we have an unstoppable faithful mountain moving god 
and I just, I have chills right now. I, I'm sorry, I'm not very good at talking better at maybe singing, but gosh, that just, I was mm. dreaming about it the other night. I, I was so excited to like talk to you guys about it. It sounded better in my dream. But anyway, you guys <laughs> get the point. <laughs> Hallelujah.
Good morning. So our personality can go by this tag conference. You can uh, text uh, to uh, the number on the bulletin or uh, you can go to Inside. Uh, you, yeah, she's just a, give it to Janet. Just give it to Janet. <laughs> give it to Janet. Um, also, we're going to fix the flag Bible study. Kids, are you ready? Adults, are you ready? Okay. So, who can tell me, and you guys can't shout it out, you have to raise your hand. Okay? So in Genesis 1-1, what does it say? Genesis 1 1 says, God created, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Okay. All right, next question. Are you guys ready? Who can tell me the seven days of creation? Go ahead. So what did he do in day one? We talked about this last Sunday, remember? So in day one, he what? What's the opposite of darkness? Yes, day one. So day two, what did he do in day two? Look above you. What's above you? Day three. Yes, and what else? I'll give him that. Day four. Day four, what did you do with day four? What, what's in the sky? What makes light? What else? What do you see at night when it's dark outside in the sky? Good job. Okay, now day five. What did you do in day five? Backpack. In the backpack. So proud of No, you can't have the Starbucks you want. Okay. It's actually $20, you guys. For all the adults. 
Yeah. 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 You don't want anything? You don't want anything? Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> so, okay, my second question is, how, how did God create Adam? Josiah. Out of, I think it was sand, dust. Yes, good job. Travis. Is that it? Yes. Josiah. Josiah. Come on. Mason, go. Go get a drink. Grab something for your sister. Or your for your mom. Grab something for your mom. Or Jaden. Or oh, grandma. That's magma. 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 Oh, magma. You're grandma, right? Yeah. You're magma. Oh, grab something for magma. So, question number oh. five. So, why do you think that God created us? What was his purpose? Yep. Good job. I'll give her that. Good job. Jaden, Mason, pay attention. We talked about this in class, remember I told you guys? What does Genesis mean? <laughs> Jaden, do you remember? So what does it say in Genesis 1-1? In the what? Help your brother. What With the question. Yeah. Julie's in the asking. beginning. Okay. Come on. You can get a prize. Come on. Jaden. Come on, on Jaden. Good job. You say it? I don't know. Oh. Skyla, you can answer. Okay. So I'm going to move on. So question number seven. Why? What happened? How, how, who deceived Eve? Who deceived Eve? JJ. I'll do it for someone. I don't know what it is, but you want. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, the devil. That's right. Good job. Um, okay. My last question. Skylar. Okay. Okay. Question number eight, friends. <laughs> who, who deceived, who deceived Adam? Eve. Good 
time. Oh, hey, Quentin. Hello, oh, Quentin. There's drinks in there, Quentin. Okay. That's what the doctor And my ordered. last question is, why do you think that God created man and a woman? Any answer? Uh, okay, I guess I'll go again, but it was because uh, uh, he made them us in his image. Right, good job. Good job, Josiah. Okay, adults, are you guys ready for your question? For a fresh. I know Sherry is. Meal. I know Sherry is. It's in my pocket. See, Sherry is the answer. $20. Okay, so this is my favorite scripture, and it kind of goes with baptism. So. 2 Corinthians 5.17 Therefore, if anyone's in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. The old has become brand new. What does that mean as a follower of Christ? And how does that implement with baptism? Yeah. yeah. Raise your hand. Raise <laughs> a hallelujah. Say it, Say it again. Say it again. What does it mean? That's right. Okay, oh. I'll give it to Janet. Okay. <laughs> yeah. okay. Back, you back to Daisha. Back to Daisha. Good job, Julie. Daisha. You need help, Julie?
something? I want the children to stand. You guys can. If you're able to stand right now. Sometimes it's easier for me to worship God when I close my eyes and I just lift my hands and I forget about the people around me and just focus on Him. So I want us to sing this chorus again. But if, if you're able to stand and just close your eyes and lift your hands to the heavens, lift your hand, your hands to Jesus and just focus on Him and, and let's just worship Him that way if we can.
vida. Aleluya. Aleluya. Hallelujah. the law or our authorities, Father, but we get to be here and found a way for for it to work today in order to praise you, God, and we're so grateful for that. I just pray um, for everybody here, everybody listening, um, our church family that is far away, um, I just pray that we can just become closer and closer to you and each other, God, especially in the times right now, there's, it's so hard for us to um, not being able to go anywhere or see anybody sometimes or having to have this space. And um, I just pray that you can lift us all up, Lord, and um, help us to pray for one another and, and keep each other in mind and just continue to serve however we can, God. And I pray for Pastor Jose. He's on fire, Lord. He's always on fire for you. And I just can't wait to, to hear the words that you've given him to speak today, Lord. And I say these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Give it up for the worship team. Woo! Yeah. How many guys are thankful for Bo and Deisha? Yes. yes. Woo! How many guys are thankful for Jesus? Yes. yes. Hey, uh, what's interesting is we're just worshiping, and we all noticed, noticed this. There's a big truck that drove right past us. I know. And they, they hit the gas on purpose to make their engine sound louder to distract us, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Isn't the enemy like that? Yes. Yeah. He's always trying to distract us. He doesn't want us to worship the one true living God. He doesn't want you to hear God's word today. See, he's going to try to distract you. Right? Yeah. But we have a choice to make. We can be allow things to distract us in life and, and get our minds off of Jesus. Or we can refocus. Like, no, I'm not going let to that, let that truck distract me. I'm not going to let this situation distract me. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to let life's circumstances my failures, my sins, to distract me from keeping my eyes on Jesus. Because he is still the author and perfecter of my faith. Amen? Amen. So we're going to get into the word right now. The title of my message this morning is The Healing of the Leper. Go to Matthew chapter 8, verse 1. If you have your Bible apps, kids, I know you guys are always on your phones. So I hope you have a Bible app. Go to Matthew 8, 1. Using the NIV, New International Version. So let me set the stage if I could. So Jesus just got done preaching the greatest sermon of all time. It was called the Sermon on the Mount. He's actually on a mountain sitting down, talking to his disciples. And at the, at the very end of his message, the people are like, wow, 
Jesus speaks with great authority, not like the scribes or the teachers of the law. So the question, how could Jesus speak with such authority? Just as God spoke to Moses from a mountain, Jesus is speaking to his disciples from a mountain. He is the voice of God. That's why he can speak with authority. And then he comes off the mountain and a crowd follows him. I don't know how big this crowd was, but one definition, it was like a mob of people that follow him. They're like, he has the words of God. Let's see what he's gonna do next. And so now Jesus is gonna show not only does he have the authority to speak on God's behalf, he also has the power to forgive sins. And he has the power to perform signs and wonders. And so that leads us to Matthew chapter 8, verse 1. You can go there. When Jesus came down from the mount mountainside, a large crowd followed him. A man with leprosy came and knelt before him and said, Lord, if you're willing, you can make me clean. And Jesus reached out his hand and touched the man and said, I'm willing, be clean. Immediately, he was cleansed of his leprosy. Then Jesus said it, the man, see that you don't tell anyone, but go and show yourself to the priest and offer the gift Moses commanded, commanded as a testimony to you. Thank you, Jesus, for your word. Help me to explain it. Help me to preach it. Help us to hear it, but help us to believe it and to live it out. Amen. And so here's my first point for you. The quarantine man went to see Jesus. See, according to tradition and according to Leviticus, if you had leprosy, you were quarantined. And so the lepers all had to live like in a village. They, were, they weren't allowed to participate in religious activities. They were like the outcasts of society. But this leper, he hears that Jesus is in town and he's tired of having this leprosy. And I bet you there's other lepers with them. And he said, hey, come on. Jesus is here. We can get healed. Let's go. But the other lepers were okay with the status quo. They're like, nah, this is who I am. I'm always going to have leprosy. Just, just stay with us. This is, God can't save us. God can't change us. But this one guy had faith in Jesus. He left the quarantine and he went to go be with Jesus to find his healing. He had a measure of faith because he calls Jesus Lord. And we know the word Lord can be translated to sir or to God. And so he believes that Jesus has the power of God, that God can actually heal this guy of his leprosy. Do you guys believe that God still has the power to heal people today? Amen. I do. Sometimes we don't see it happen. I mean, I've been praying for a long time, God heal me of my acid reflux. I've been struggling with acid reflux for three years. No joke. Sometimes I wake up in the morning burping. I mean, it happens almost every night. I wake up just burping. And I have to eat a banana. I, I, I'll drink uh, uh, pickle juice. I'll do whatever I need to do to help my stomach to calm down. And sometimes it'll calm down, sometimes it won't. And so the question is, will you continue to worship Jesus even if you don't get your healing in this lifetime? And Josiah told me, Daddy, but there's a miracle taking place. Every time you preach, you never burp. And I've been preaching for a long time. I've never burped once while I'm preaching. Amen. Amen. That's a miracle. Amen. God is a God of miracles. Mm -hmm. He's a God of sign and wonders. And so this guy that had leprosy was willing to leave the quarantine to go to Jesus. And so what I, I get from this text is like, sometimes we just need to leave our circumstances behind. Let me say that again. Sometimes we gotta leave whatever's holding us back behind to go after Jesus. Can I hear a big amen? Amen. 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 There's a story in 2 Kings, a guy, a guy named Naaman. 
He was a warrior. He was a leader of an army. Uh, he was very successful, very successful and, and rich, filthy rich. He had it all, but he had leprosy. And so this was the thing that was killing him. I mean, even though he could win battle after battle, this leprosy was literally killing him. It was destroying him. And he hears that there's a prophet in town named Elisha, the prophet. And so he decides to go to Elisha's house. And he's like, Elisha, I hear you have the power of God. Could you heal me? And Elisha tells him, okay, this is what you need to do. Go to the Jordan River and dip in the Jordan River seven times. And this guy had so much pride. Sometimes pride can hold us back from God's best. And so he says, no, nah, I'm not going to go dip in some dirty water. The Jordan's dirty. Why would I want to go there? I thought you were going to wave your hand and heal me. And see, he takes off and he leaves. He's upset. It's like, man, this guy, who does he think he is? Tell me I got to go dip in the Jordan seven times. And one of the servants says, just humble yourself. If Elijah told you to go to battle, you would have did that. Just go. Do what the prophet says. And sometimes we got to humble ourselves before God to receive our healing. And so he finally humbles himself. He goes to the Jordan River and he dips himself seven times and he comes out. And guess what? He's healed. And so God healed this leper of the Old Testament. Now we see in the New Testament, God is using Jesus to bring healing. And here's the thing I want you to know. Sometimes God can use ordinary people like you and me to bring healing. Really. I, I have prayed over people and I've seen them get healed. And sometimes I've prayed over people and they don't get healed. I don't get it. But I'm going to continue to believe in God. Whether I receive my healing or that person receives the healing. And see, we learned the second point is the leper humbled himself before Jesus. We read in Matthew 8, too, if you could go there. A man with leprosy came and knelt before Jesus. The word knelt here means to worship. He got down on his knees and he began to worship Jesus. Isn't that beautiful? He began to worship God before his breakthrough. Before the healing came about, he was already giving God praise and worshiping Jesus. Are you willing to worship God even before your breakthrough? Are you willing to continue to worship God before the healing comes? And so he bows down. He's like, Lord, if you're willing, heal me. healing because Jesus loves people he loves the leper and, and see this guy that had leprosy he also had sin we don't know what sin he committed the Bible doesn't say you don't know all my sins if you knew all my sins you probably wouldn't want to listen to me right now but I have a past we all have a past God knows your sin God knew the leopard's sin but it seems to me he wants two types of healing right now. He wants to be healed of his leprosy, but he also wants to be forgiven of his sins. So he goes to the right person. He goes to Jesus, who has the authority to heal and to forgive. Is that amazing? There's a lady right now. I know her name is Mary Terry. If you're watching online, hi, Mary. And she's going through a tremendous, a, a difficult time right now. Her son had to go through, uh, this past week, brain surgery. I can't imagine my son, one of my children, going through brain surgery. And he only had a 50% chance that he's going to make it. Brain surgery is no joke. My aunt went through brain surgery and died. So he has a 50% chance he's going to make it. And so I text her this week. I go, hey, hey Mary, how are you doing? And she texts me back and says, Pastor Jose, I'm doing strong in the Lord. How can she say that? Because she's worshiping God. Even before her son gets healed, she's believing, you know what? 
Gary is in God's hands. What do you need to put into God's hands this morning? What do you need to surrender to God? Say, you know what, God? Whatever happens, I'm yours. Whether I get my healing or not, Jesus, I, I'm still going to worship you. I still believe. That's the type of faith God wants us to have. Amen? Amen. So the leper made his request to the Lord. He said, Lord, if you're willing, you can make me clean. And, and Jesus just says a word. He doesn't even say, he says a word and he touches the man. See, Jesus isn't afraid to get dirty. That's one thing I love about Jesus. He's not afraid to touch sinners. He's not afraid to touch me. He's not afraid to touch you. We have a God that loves people unconditionally. It doesn't matter what you've done in life. He still wants to touch you. He still wants to have a relationship with you. He still wants to be close to you. He, he could have said to the leper, get away from me. If I touch you, I'll be breaking the law. And I can see the religious hypocrites there saying, oh, don't touch him, Jesus. If you touch him, you're going to be dirty like him. But Jesus is willing to touch the leper. He's willing to, to get into his life. He's willing to get close to him. And that's one thing I love about God. He's willing to get close to sinners. He's, he's willing to get close to people that are broken. This man was broken. He's like, Jesus, if you're willing, heal me of my leprosy. And Jesus touches the man. He was, he was at the, the lowest point of his life. And that's when he finds Jesus. Isn't that amazing? Sometimes we, we meet the Savior at the lowest point of our life. Yep. Yes. I know that's when I met the Savior. It was at the lowest point of my life. Mm -hmm. And we still go through low points in life. Life's not easy. It's not easy being a Christian sometimes. It's not easy following Jesus. Sometimes we'll have difficult days. I was having a difficult day. Actually, last Friday I was having a difficult Right here. But we're trying to film a, a Facebook video live. And the kids were, one one of my sons were, one of my child, children, was misbehaving. I'm not going to say who. But we're trying to make this video, and it, he likes to joke around a lot. And I like it when he jokes, because it makes the video actually more cool. <laughs> but he kept disrupting the message. I couldn't even get a word in. And he kept acting up. I was like, we had to keep retaking the video, retaking the video. Finally, I was like, I'm done. Take, I'm done with this video. Let's go. I was upset. And I didn't want to be a hypocrite and keep doing a video when I'm mad. I was like, let's go. Let's get out of here. I didn't want to do the video no more. And so my youngest son falls asleep in the car. He just didn't get enough sleep the night before. So he was, he was in his right state of mind that day. I love you, too. As I get home. And I, I'm, I'm still a little upset. And I was like, I need to go for a walk. Parents, have you ever got upset with your children? Am I the only one in this boat? You're, you're, you're it. it. You're it. <laughs> yeah, no, never. I'm only human. <laughs> Born to make mistakes. Born to make mistakes. Remember that song? Yes. Okay. And so I'm struggling. I'm upset with my children. And so I go, Sherry, I need to go for a walk. And so I go on my prayer walk. I need, I need some Jesus time. So I go for my prayer walk, and I'm walking around the levee, and Sherry doesn't know what happens here. So I'm walking around the le levee, and out of the blue, I hear a, Hi! I'm like, where did that come And I look across the levee. There's a black lady wearing a black shirt, and she's like, she, look, she looks like she's in her 20s. Hi! I'm like, She's like across the levee. It's kind of hard to have a conversation with someone across from a levee. And I was like, hi. And then I was just trying to be cordial and nicer, her, and I don't know if she wanted to talk to me or what. And I kept walking and walking, and I was like, and in my mind, I'm like, that was nice of her. And I kept walking and walking, and I look back, and she's gone. Oh, wow. She disappeared. Oh, wow. Like, was she an angel? Hmm. Uh, or a human. I don't know. But what I'm trying to communicate is God can use simple people like you and me to bring healing, mm -hmm. to uplift people's soul, to cheer people up. I believe Jesus wants it, us who 
can't be afraid to get our hands dirty. We, we need it. If someone's hurting, if someone's down, we need to be right there and say, Hi, how you doing? I'm here to pray for you. I'm here to encourage you. I'm, I'm here to tell you that Jesus still loves you. Amen? Amen. See, Jesus, is, he's trying to show that his disciples, hey, let's not be hypocrites. Let's love everybody, even the leper. Amen? Amen? So the man found healing that day. We read in Matthew 8, 3. Jesus reached out his hand, touched the man, said, I am willing, be clean. Immediately, he was cleansed of his lepers. And so Jesus healed and forgave the most unlikely individual that day. And Jesus hasn't changed. He's still the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Amen? Amen. He's still willing to heal and forgive the most unlikely individual. He's a God of love. Lastly, we read, the man began to witness. See, after he found his healing, he could not help but now share the good news of Jesus Christ with the world. Jesus says, all right, wait, before you share Jesus with the world, start with the, the religious priests. Go back to church and worship. Worship God. And that's what he did. He, he goes back to church and he's like, God healed me. Jesus healed me. Make God number one in your life. I know you haven't been to church in a long time. Go back to church. You are cleansed. You are forgiven. You are healed. And now start witnessing. Start sharing the good news that I am a God that forgives. I'm a God that heals. See, God wants us to be his witness. And it, yes, I'm a witness, but we're all called to be his witness. And I know you guys have all, one thing we all have in common, common we have all shared our faith with at least one person. Continue to share your faith. Continue to share the goodness of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. If I get the worship team back here, we're going to close in worship. See, after God heals us, what shall be the proper response? Let me say this again. After God heals us, what shall be the pro what should be the proper response? The proper re response is to give him worship, and the proper response is to give witness, to start sharing Jesus with the leper. And we all know some lepers, because I was a leper. And sometimes I still struggle with leprosy. How about you? God wants you and I to share Jesus with the lepers of this world, with the outcasts, with those people that look like they don't deserve Jesus, with those, with the atheists, with the non-believer, with the sinner. God wants us to share the good news of Jesus Christ with people like you and me. God doesn't discriminate. The church does not discriminate. We love all people. We love the leper. If you love the leper, I want you to stand. If you love yourself, I want you to stand. If you love baby. Jesus, I want you to stand. Thanks, Let us worship Jesus. Cherry. Because he has loved Cherry. the leper. He has come to bring healing to the leper. He came to bring healing to you. He came to bring healing to me.
joining us we'll be here next sunday at 10 again if you're online come join us next sunday at 10 o'clock uh safe place it's a awesome place to worship god uh, i want to ask julie to close us in prayer she's such a great prayer warrior <laughs> and i love how she prays she prays with such passion and so julie you want to close us in prayer sure i don't need a microphone Okay, she doesn't need a mic. I have a powerful voice. Dear Heavenly Father, we just come before you and we just ask that you just bless our time together, Father, as, as we're on our way, Father God, home or doing our busy Sunday, wherever the case may be. I ask that you just um, cover us, Father, that you will just be with our family today, Lord, and um, that you would give them traveling mercies. Those that are online, Father, I pray that you have a blessed day today and a blessed Sunday, Father. Father, and, um, and we just ask that uh, you just pour your spirit on our people, on your people, Father, and we just ask this in your name. Amen. Amen. Amen.